and welcome to Quiz Week. And forgive my croaky voice. Um, some might call it husky, but I just call it recovering from a cold. So um, hopefully it will hold out through tonight because we have some tremendous guests, a couple of whom are probably just basking in the glow of the victory that we just watched on University Challenge. But we also have Bagwan from Only Connect and Richard, the winner of tonight's mastermind so what i'm going to do is bring them onto the stream without any further ado um so let us welcome um bagwan and richard hello hello Gareth. Hi. thanks for having, thanks for having me yes it's good to have you both back um and uh, richard congratulations oh hang on uh we now have michael and john as well so here we go we've got all four yeah. And congratulations Hello, to um, Michael and John. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Congrats, Richard. And very, very well played, Bagwine, as well. That was really fun to watch. Yeah, good games all around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great was, games all around, everybody. It was a really, really entertaining night. Now, I'm just going to put up the uh, the banner to remind people that they can put comments and questions in the chat, and we'll try and bring those into the discussion. Um, but we've already had a comment from one of last week's guests, Sam Woodcock. Um, Congratulations, Birmingham, particularly like the catch on Andy Weir. Um, <laughs> good to much. see you, um, Sam. Um, now, Birmingham, you have to go probably about halfway through, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we so. will uh, chat with you. Richard, what about you? Um, are you here for the duration now? Um, I, I, I am. I will extend congratulations to Birmingham, um, though only because you told me they won. I I was self basking for the last hour, so I haven't yet watched anything else. <laughs> That's well, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't blame me. Yeah. Um, um, they, they, I don't know. I mean, John, for a guy who's one big on millionaire, this has <laughs> got to be up there, hasn't it? One, one of the best quiz performances you must have been involved with. Yeah, I, like it sounds odd, but genuinely, I would put this above Millionaire, um, just for the pure fact that on Millionaire I was all on my own. And, you know, it was obviously lovely to win that amount of money, but to do it with some great people and great teammates just made it all that sweeter because then we could go and celebrate together afterwards. So, uh, and yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, Michael, um, as a captain, that must have been how you dreamt it the night before. You know, oh my gosh, it's even, even better than what I could have dreamt because, you know, going into it, I really wanted, you know, our goal was to basically score as many points as we could because we didn't know, you know, because we've, we've all seen plenty of times on University Challenge where you have these like storming comebacks and it's too late to do anything. So our goal was just to let's get through as many questions as we can, get as many points as we can. But my other goal was I want everybody to get at least one buzz like and that felt really good you know um when jamie got her the, the the buzz that she got um she was the last one for us to buzz it was like the, the like such a proud moment for me <laughs> <laughs> um and it, and it was a i mean you guys you got off to a really rapid start um and then never really looked back you would nearly pass the highest scoring losers threshold before the opposition had scored um i mean it was just you were so fast on, on the buzzer. How, had you been doing practice on the buzzer? Yeah, so we, I mean, it was all during lockdown. It was filmed. So we weren't, we didn't meet in person until the day <laughs> of the recording. Um, but we'd met like once or twice a week on Zoom doing regular practices. We'd done, um, none of us had done any kind of quiz bowl stuff before. Um, we got together for University Challenge and then we entered some quiz bowl tournaments mm -hmm. and did that as well. Um, and I think, yeah, hopefully that really showed we'd practiced a lot of buzzer quizzes, um, testing each other on the you know, buzzer reactions and stuff. And yeah, yeah, and, and John, John, I'm really grateful actually to John for finding the, the quiz bowl, um, kind of community because I wasn't as aware of it, and uh, I think that I would have been far or felt far less prepared for being on the show if I hadn't done some actual competition beforehand. Because you can practice on your own, you know, with the team and it's all well and good. But if it doesn't feel like there's anything at stake, then 
Uh, I can imagine the nerves would have got to me even more than, than I th was feeling them already. And actually, just a shout out to Bristol. I know that um, Sam put a comment in earlier because we did some sort of practice matches against yeah. some of the other teams. So Bristol, one team who we did like a kind of practice meet up on uh, Zoom with and did some quizzing with them. So thanks to we, those guys. We did well. a couple of them actually with Bristol mm. and each of us won once. So we need a we need a rematch sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who knows what's going to happen later in the Well, obviously, you know what's going to happen later exactly. in the series. We don't know. Um, um, <coughs> there, there was a, a couple of bit, bits of uh, similarities between uh, Mastermind with Richard and um, and uh, your University Challenge, and maybe maybe even OC. But this was, let's call it a home question coming up. So Richard, the cello player or cellist, yep. got how many strings are there on a cello? <laughs> um, she kind of, you know. That was a nice little dolly. Michael, the um, the PhD in Shakespeare, the first set of bonuses is, is Crows and Ravens in Shakespeare. Yeah. Bagwan, do you feel kind of left out that you didn't get, you know, um, makes of jukeboxes or stuff like that? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's... Uh... It's just how the way the questions fall and only connect, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I mean... It is quite ironic. Is it's quite funny actually when you see those type of things happen. It's, it's it just adds adds to the experience. It's, it's Although you you guys did get the music question, didn't you? After only three clues. Um, yeah, the combine harvester one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Which, which doesn't which doesn't usually happen. First of all, and secondly, like I don't like I still don't understand what I was about. <laughs> really well done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got twenty eight clues, and I've got forty three, and I've got a brand new combine harvester, and I'll give you the key. And also, they didn't I think the pre in the first round as well? Didn't you get the one where it was there was the Ariana Grande and we did, yeah, um, the country one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Victoria got very cross about the Combine Harvester one. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, um, she made her feelings quite clear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michael, um, not Michael, Richard, um, in your general knowledge round, you you were chasing down a large total, and you you didn't quite manage to put a run together until quite late in the day. It was but cello kind of felt like it kick started that kind of. Um, run towards the end we we start to feel a bit of pressure there are there are moments when when you think yeah you know, something something might be your day if the right question lands and yes yes the cello one was it was a uh i mean i i i'd it's one of only about four questions i remembered of my general knowledge round after i came out <laughs> weirdly I, I was sitting in the in the green room afterwards and i wrote down all 13 of my specialty subject questions from memory yeah. Wow. But I couldn't remember more than about four of the GK. Uh, three of them were ones I'd got wrong, and the cello one. Mm. Uh, and and so that, so yeah yeah I suppose there's a moment when you think okay maybe I can I can use this as a relaxation point. Um, and yeah, it's. I think I got the last six right, and that was what was needed to to just tip over the line. Mm. A tie would have been fine on passes, but obviously it's quite nice to get the to get. The, the sunlight yeah, is well. right. indeed <laughs> indeed um talking about kind of memory of questions and you know i've had situations where the ones i get right i have absolutely no memory of um and the ones i get wrong haunt me Birmingham, you've not got very much to haunt you, have you at all, really? Um, well, you know, it's, it's funny you should say this, but when we came out of the studio, and even though we did amazingly, the one thing in my head that stuck was that I didn't get Tunguska for the, um, um, you know, a bit about the Russian um, explosion. Even though, as he was reading the question, in my head I was thinking Tunguska, Tunguska, and then for some reason I buzzed in and said something different. Um, so, yeah, that was the one thing that stuck with me. Um, and for me, you know, getting getting the uh, the film adaptation of Macbeth, not getting that one was really frustrating to me. And I haven't, I've just barely looked at my phone and I have so many people from my Shakespeare life being like, we were screaming at the television. But, but it was weird because I kind of had, like I did say it in the in the conferencing, but like I we had already had a Macbeth as an answer and it just didn't seem like it would be a, appropriate for that to be an answer twice in the same program. So that's why I sort of dismissed it. But yeah, I, I am kind of kicking myself. And that and um, not getting I May Destroy You because it's like obviously so famous now. But to be fair, at the time, it really had only yeah. like recently come out. So 
it wasn't and, as and, hard, it wasn't as like in the air as it is these days. <laughs> and has John forgiven you for uh, denying him a shot at the musicals? <laughs> you know what? He he forgave me immediately because because I buzzed we buzzed at the same time. I I just barely beat him, and I turned to him and I said sorry, and he was like. I thought it was Chicago too. <laughs> well, I think we both recognized it being like Candor and Ed. Yeah. <laughs> and then both of us just had an obviously mental mind blank. But um, yeah, it's frustrating because I'd been saying beforehand that my dream music, my dream music round would have been musicals. Um, and yeah. uh, sadly, we were denied the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, Bagram, what would be your dream round if there was a bonus subject on University Challenge? Oh, I'm thinking about three different subjects. I mean, I'm a dentist, so teeth. There we go. <laughs> we'll throw that in there. My area of expertise, so. <laughs> well, um, you yeah, know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. Um, so you never know. Um, Richard, this wasn't your first time on Mastermind, was it? No, I was on no. about five years ago. How did it feel, um, or how different was it as an experience with Clive Myrie compared with um John Humphreys. Um I I I I'm gonna get comments in in in, in, in the in the chat here, but I, I'm I'm not on the John Humphreys death threat, death squad, hate mail fan club. Um I I you know, take him or leave him. Never really had a problem in the, never really had a problem, never really had a mm -hmm. um something to say one way or the other. Mm. Uh, so I, I went in with this expectation that it was going to be different, but probably not as refreshingly different as other people have described. Mm. Um, and, and yet, and yet it, it, with, with all that, um, Clive is, is lovely. He is so disarming. Mm. Um, he seems genuinely happy when you're doing well. He made, made this whole thing about how he, he just wanted to be able to say good luck to people at the start of their rounds. Mm. Uh, if uh, he can tell, he's got a little bit, a bit of stick for that. Yes, lengthy mm. uh, acknowledgements. But actually, when you're sitting in the chair uh, and and you're face to face, he can see when you've pulled an answer or dragged an answer out of somewhere. And there's just something in in his ability to very, very quickly uh, to acknowledge that even in the middle of a round. Mm. Um, he's shrewd enough to work out when you've taken an educated guess or a punt mm. or just a wild stab in the dark, and if it pays off, mm. uh, is is complimentary. Um, and as, as I think, the bit they used of the twenty minute post interview that was born <laughs> down to about thirty seconds <laughs> was, was me commenting on on how much of a swine he'd been dragging out acknowledging whether Lithuania was the right answer and <laughs> then whether that had got me over the line. Um, and I called him out on it when I bumped into him in the corridor on the on the way out of the studios. And 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 all he wanted to talk about was just how impressed he was that I'd known the answer. And he did, it couldn't matter less because he was just so thrilled that someone had known it and that they were happy. Uh, he, he he genuinely is someone who wants. I think as he grows into the series, is going to want to mm. see people doing well. Is going to mm. invest in them. Um, mm. And and that 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 was a really nice touch, I felt. Yeah, lovely. Michael and John, I mean, did you get much opportunity to talk to Jeremy, um, Jeremy Paxman outside of being asked questions? Do you get a sense of of him as a man? There? Not really. No, we. I mean, it was basically kind of in the studio doing the questions, and then and then out again. So. Um, no, we didn't. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, he when we passed him as you know, sitting in his chair, he's perfectly friendly and uh, you know, said hello and stuff. Um, yeah, well, there was a funny moment actually where you know the producers are sort of like, oh, you know, uh, if you have any issues, like um, if you need anything, just put your hand up in the air. Yeah, Jeremy might not notice, but somebody will. And just before we started filming, I was like, oh my god my bladder, like I need to, like I need the loo. And so I put my hand in the air and I'm looking around and everybody's kind of like running around doing things, getting the set ready. I'm like looking around for somebody. And all of a sudden I hear Jeremy Paxman's voice. Do you need anything, Mr. Bartell? <laughs> <laughs> so it was the exact opposite of what they said was gonna happen. <laughs> it was well, great. So at least there wasn't an accident on set. So that was <laughs> no, 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 no. He allowed me to go. I think, I think I all of us are grateful for that. <laughs> Bagwan, the, the one question I get asked more than anything about the TV shows I've been on 
is what's Victoria Corrin Mitchell like? Um, did you have much to do with her in your filmings? Yeah, she, um, I mean, we, we never got to ask her what the face tattoo is all about today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We still don't know, um, but she no. She actually um, on, on the first episode that we filmed, um, she sort of was quite um, asking everybody, not only just the contestants but the crew members, if anybody had seen the the, the show on Netflix, Shit's Creek, um, and I was the only person in the room that um, that had. So she sort of automatically gravitated towards me, and we had a little sort of bondy moment about it but yeah she's very she's very matter of fact she just sort of comes in and mm. she has all like her bits with her and then she just sits down does a thing and goes very very professional but um yeah it, she, she's like she comes across very quirky on screen and she's like that in real life as well <laughs> richard as, as a series champion did you have uh, a similar experience of her um She's, she's someone you, you get to, you, you warm to the further you go into the series. I get the impression, and I say this with no frame of reference whatsoever, that if you were one of those teams who loses their first round match, um, you aren't going to get to know her as well as, as, as others. But, but mm. she, but, but, and yet, and yet what she says on the show um, at the end of a, a team being eliminated has all the warmth that you, you see of her in reality. Yes, I spoke to her for about, half an hour I think uh, at, at the rap party at the end of uh, the series finale um, and and she and she was brilliant she mm. remembered random answers from earlier episodes that you know she might use as, as conversation starters uh, mm. and and then I think she wanted her own downtime she wanted to, to, uh, to ask did, did this anecdote work or did um did that little bit of chat between questions work out? Uh, and she is, she is, as, as Bagwan just said, she, she's as as quirky, as perspicacious in reality as she as she comes across on the show. Good word. Um, <laughs> back to uh, to University Challenge. Um, so there you go. Um, if anybody asks what Victoria Corrin Mitchell was like, <laughs> perspicacious. Perspicacious. <laughs> um, that's the word. Um, Sussex, I mean, as a viewer, it was quite painful. I mean, I was I was quite happy when they got um, back into positive numbers. Um, but did you speak to them afterwards? Because you know, how how were yeah. they feeling? They must have felt shattered. Yeah, I mean, they had a really difficult. Um, kind of preparation for the show because I, I mean they didn't mention it on the screen but their reserve their captain dropped out or, or for whatever reason couldn't play and they found out the day before the filming um so the person who was filling in for the cap you know on the show that you saw was actually you know wasn't due to be the captain um and one of the other team members would have just been the reserve and then she stepped up to play in the actual team um so they, yeah they had a really kind of disruptive 24 hours leading up to it so it's kind of not surprising in a way that they weren't quite on top form i don't think um but yeah, I mean, they were all genuinely friendly. And when we saw them mm. afterwards briefly, they were saying that they were going to be cheering us on for the rest of the series. And mm. um, yeah, they were all genuinely really nice people. Yeah, and, yeah um, they were. They were really lovely. And it, it is it is a shame because, you know, and um, it did it did seem as though kind of everything that could have gone wrong for them that day, like aside, from, you know, regardless of what had happened in, in the studio, um, just mm. went wrong. And it was it, it was um, it was really um it was really gutting, uh, actually. We we felt, um, I mean, there was a heaviness for me. I mean, I won't speak for everybody else, but there was certainly a heaviness for me of knowing that, you know, as as competitive as I am, and as much as I wanted to win, as much as you know, want to continue the show, like I do have a lot of empathy empathy for people in sort of mm. tough situations like that, and I don't want anybody to feel. I don't want any, like anybody to feel bad and you know just thinking about what i would feel in that situation i, I just mm -hmm. um i do feel but they are really lovely people and i and i do hope that they keep quizzing because you know there's there's some some evidence obviously that they they do they do know their stuff in a lot of ways but mm -hmm. it was just an it was just not a you know it's just not a great day for them and i you know mm -hmm. but i hope they're I hope they're enjoying themselves <laughs> every way they can right now. And I think it was really rough because when they did manage to get in, the question, the, some of the bonuses they had, I thought were some of the mm -hmm. harder bonuses, yeah. like the picture round on the film picture rounds. To be honest, I wouldn't have got any three, any of the ones, um, and they were quite 
unlucky because they said I think you know, my my, my friend, the, my cor friend, the courgette. That, that was the is... one that I knew, and I'd seen it. And and as soon as as soon as I heard them say courgette, I was like over there being like, oh, they're gonna get this one. And as soon as I heard them give the answer that they gave, and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the right one, I was just like, oh man, this is this is mm. really rough. Like mm. you you couldn't have hit the post any harder on that one. <laughs> just everything was going wrong. But what impressed me was Asri and Khan Wright kept going for stuff. Yeah, yeah they yeah. did. Well, that's I think. We we said afterwards that that's what they had to do because they had to take a risk because they weren't gonna you know get accumulate loads of points just by sitting back and waiting because um, then we might you know get in ahead of them so they did exactly exactly the right thing by trying to get in there and you know it's high risk high reward isn't it on university challenge and unfortunately um, for them the risk didn't pay off yeah and so much of it has to do with just obviously as we all know how how the questions fall and I think you know mm -hmm. if they'd fallen a different way on a different day for them. They, they certainly would have been in there. And, you know, I'm looking at, at your stats, and John, you got one, two, three, four, five, six starters, three, five, I think, for for you, Michael. I mean, that's, that's dream time. Were there any of those that you're particularly happy with? Um, I think for me, the Orlando one, um, just because when he started reading the question, I didn't really know where it was going. Um, and generally as someone who, you know, kind of specializes in literature is the kind of thing I should get. Um, and I wasn't hundred percent sure of the answer. Um, I kind of, even when I said it on TV, it kind of comes across as like Orlando. Um, cause I, yeah, said it with no uh, sense of, uh, definitiveness at all, but yeah, really pleased that. That was right. Yeah. About you, Michael. I, I felt, I mean, my very first buzz was on William Holman Hunt. And I just saw another message that I just happened to see was someone saying, Oh, I would have beat you to William Holman Hunt. And I was just like, Well, I'm sure you would have done, but I, I would have beat me to William Holman Hunt because I, I knew it as soon as he started reading it. But what's, what the funny thing is, I had just been looking at the painting, The Scapegoat, the day before. And when he said that name, I was like, this can't, this, this literally can't be <laughs> it because it would just be, it would just be, it's just too, I, do, I like, and that's what was going through my head at the time. And then finally, I was like, "Well, it seems to be." Um, but yeah, I was proud of that one. But I was also really proud of the Spanish one because on the trip up, I was talking with my teammates about how I do speak a number of languages, but Spanish isn't one of them, which is weird because I come from Texas, where most people speak Spanish. Um, but I was saying to them, "I can read Spanish, though," and I'm glad that um, that turned out to be true. <laughs> I mean, I, I could read the word llama. And from that, I just guessed alpaca. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, that was uh, good. But I'm not necessarily a fan of those translating. Questions. Oh, I, I can do that all day. I'm writing my I'm writing my PhD about translation, so <laughs> <laughs> it suits me. <laughs> and we're back onto the home questions again. Um, so, um, I mean, there were lots of lots of great um, sets of questions for you. Um, but I I, I I like the teamwork, particularly between you two. <laughs> and that was very noticeable that there was kind of, you know, a lot of trust and, you know, you're both great quizzes and obviously, you know, you're going to be bouncing off each other. But I think the, the Danish answer. Mm. Oh, yeah. Really that was, yeah, I was thinking I was thinking that uh, as, you know, we, we actually talked about that afterwards. Yeah, like, oh, that was some pretty that was some pretty good synergy there as a matter of fact when we were watching um uh only connect today this is the first time we've ever like watched television together or, like, <laughs> or anything um we've done a lot of quizzing together now but um we're watching only connect and the same thing was kind of happening where he would say something and i'd be like oh so i think i think that's maybe yeah. what we need to do next <laughs> so you've not been on oc then john no nope. oh well you you two are made for it then <laughs> we will uh, we will look forward to seeing you on that going forward um so uh yeah okay what were your what were your highlights then if you have to pick one thing from your episode of uh, uc tonight what would be your top i mean for me it's not an individual um buzz or an individual answer it's just as michael mentioned before the fact that each of us on the team managed to get at least one good buzz in um because yeah um as you said michael and i have you know um, more experienced quizzing, I guess, than uh, Mark and Jamie. So we were very conscious of, you know, not wanting to kind of dominate everything. Um, so we're really pleased that the buzzers were spread around a little bit. And um, in the bonuses as well, Mark and Jamie both contributed um, as much as we did as well. So just the general teamwork and just the fun we had as well. Hopefully it came across on TV that we were genuinely really enjoying it and trying to have a bit of a laugh and a smile and a joke at the same time. 
definitely did. I would agree. I, I completely echo everything that John just said. And I also, you know, that is the thing for me. We were thrown together. Um, we all um, auditioned via Zoom. You know, the Guild of Students uh, had this Zoom audition and none of us knew each other. But I mean, John and I had met online a couple of times in Mimir, I think, mostly. But, um, but it became very clear very quickly that we had a really great group of people. And in addition, not only Jamie and Mark, mm -hmm. but also Rachel Humphreys, mm -hmm. who's our um, who's our reserve. Like mm -hmm. all five of us, we just get on so well. And for me, the, 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 the thing that I felt most, in addition to just like how proud I was of my teammates um, and how, how great they did was, I'm just so glad we get to continue doing this together as a group, mm. like because we just and and even you know other people that would sort of you know encounter us would, would be like, oh, we this is really your only time you've ever met <laughs> yeah. before. Like <laughs> nobody believed that they thought they thought that we just you know made so much sense that, um, and I'm really proud of that. And it feels and that's a feeling that's you know continued. Mm. Um, and luckily we get to still do quiz bowls together and stuff. So mm. that's been really great. And um, we got a question here from Ali. Saying, John, I was wondering with Orlando whether you'd identified Virginia Woolf, but we're guessing which one. Um, no, something in the back of my mind was telling. I've, I've read Orlando, and in fact, I I read Orlando many years ago when I did my um, undergrad degree, which mm. is uh, more years ago than I care to remember. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of dredging something from about 15 years ago in the back of my mind, where I was like, I'm sure Peter Sackville West has something to do with Orlando. Um, so, yeah, it was in the back there somewhere. I thought that was brilliant because I had absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Um, let's, um, whilst you're here, um, and I know you're going to have to shoot off, but let's yeah. touch on Only Connect as you did watch it. Bagwan, um, not the result you wanted, um, yeah, but you came up against a fearsome team tonight. Absolutely brilliant team, the golfers. I mean, when we were doing the sort of the practice rounds before filming, they were just very, very much on fire. So, um, yeah, couldn't have lost to a better team, and um, we we wish them well with the rest of the um, the series. But um, yeah, a really, really great team. I mean, we 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 were very happy with our performance, and you know, the a lot of the a lot of the questions we were seemed to get, and we did get a few sort of points steeled over. But um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, great, great team, and really, really great match actually. It was. Um, I mean, I, I really enjoyed a lot of the question, but then I always do. But I, I, even the uh, the first set of connections in round one, the UK number one's crazy in love. Mm -hmm. Film music, yeah, yeah. can you get your gun? I just love the the little the little play there, the football, Dundee United and African countries, yeah. Guinea-Bissau. I just like that because once I spotted it, it was, oh, that's very satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were yeah, there we any questions that, but... you were really happy with getting? Um, I mean, the music ones, we were quite happy getting those sort of, uh, especially, you know, not on the last clue. And um, so I, I suppose having to have a team name, team name like Jukeboxes, we, we would be expected to get the music questions right. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were very happy with those. Um, but yeah, I think I think that our highlight question has got to be the Combine Harvester one because, you know, we're very happy that we got it. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of them, um, some of them, we were quite gutted that we didn't get because looking back on it now, it's like, okay, this is easy. But yeah, um, some 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 great some great questions. This uh, some very difficult questions as well. This this episode. I mean, sitting watching shows at home is one thing. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. it's easy, it's obvious, etc. But when you're in the studio under the pressure, it's an entirely different thing. And, and you know, it was a good. As you say, it was a really good performance. Um, you were unlucky with, um, I thought, with the picture around in that first first half. You didn't quite get there. Um, no. That was the Space Shuttles one. I liked the Disney Inspirations one. I thought, oh, just, yeah. And the music, you got it from the riddle, did you? Is that right? Um, Which question was that? That was the, um, the quandaries, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we knew we didn't know the first one, but we knew the. I think there was an Ariana Ariana Grande track in there, and then the third one. And then we sort of got it after that. Um, but yeah, a lot of the questions that the golfers had picked. So, for example, the Disney Inspirations one. We were mm -hmm. saying afterwards as a team that we did know those. The, mm -hmm. the um, Angry Anderson, Billy Bragg one. We we knew that oh. from from the second one. So mm -hmm. it was just a bit like, oh, look at the questions we could have. Um, but it is what it is. Indeed. Um, Catherine's making a pun. 
uh, back when I was a dentist, does he have an incisor wit to go with the job? Um, <laughs> you've heard them all, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and um, I enjoyed Bagman's reaction to getting I Will Survive. That would be in the... Uh... I had a reaction to that. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, was that is that Ellis Matthews? What, just... Yes, the Reverend Ellis Matthews. Um, um, a good, good good grief. It was, it, it, it was a very good friend of mine and, and, and messaged me congratulations immediately after uh, tonight. Hello. You've now got a, a new thing, Cadavergate. Um, quite literally, with your um, Lichgate question, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they were. I, I don't know whether they whether they thought they it would be cruel to 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 put this in, but in the twenty minute discussion, they didn't <laughs> use most of afterwards. Um, I was musing in my head, semi semi ironically, just uh, musing that um. I was really hoping I hadn't got any religion questions wrong because that would be embarrassing going back to school. And when I said that, I had completely forgotten the the uh, the Lichgate question. Hmm. Um, I just I, I thought I was I was half joking, and it wasn't until I got back to the hotel afterwards that Sam said, um, "You did well, but are you going to live down getting a, a question wrong about a church?" And and when I'd made this line in the interview, I hadn't. I hadn't had a question in mind. And then immediately after, I was thinking, I'd really quite like them to use that. And then yeah. embarrass me. Presumably, <laughs> they will think they're not allowed to, although mm. that's cruel. But it, it, it would actually quite work as a flashback to say, oh, I hope I didn't get any religion questions wrong, and then have them play the little <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's uh, it's a lot easier to take something like that when you're m marching into the semi-finals. So, um, yeah, very well done there. Um, second round, Bagwan. Um, so you got your combine harvester one, which I just yeah, I I didn't understand the first two clues. I have absolutely no problem in admitting that until it was explained, and then it kind of made it obvious. Um, the Monarchs one, I quite liked. It's mm, fairly right. kind of simple. Once you, you, you yeah. twig it, it's good. But that was a nice one. Yeah, Laura, Laura on our team like... got got fierce knowledge for for the monarchy. So we have to we have her to thank for that one because she she knew her stuff very much. So on on that. Yeah. So yeah, thanks, Laura. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, AABBCCDD. Um, Michael and John, were there any questions on uh, tonight's? Um, OC that you remember particularly. I mean, one one that I thought was a good. We, neither of us got it, and it was one of those ones when you're thinking, I, I've got no idea where this is going. Is the one where there's the the first word had one letter, and then the next oh, word had two letters, and three through to. And you're, and you're that like, seems so unfair. What, you I know, I I am not something it said, and then I can't know they something happened, something so. And you're like, I have no idea what they're getting. And then when you hear the, I think a, a beautiful OC question is when. You've got no idea, but when you hear the answer, you think, oh, yes, that makes so much sense. Um, and actually, it was so simple, and yet I had no idea what the answer was. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't particularly like that as a question because I felt like it would have, I don't know, even if you had figured it out, how are you going to have time to come up with, you know, in the, in the time that you have, how are you going to have time to come up with a, a sentence that's, you know, eight, nine, and ten, or whatever it was, like, like your mind, my mind doesn't work that quickly. And I like to think that my mind can work pretty quickly. Not, definitely not that. What I did like though, was the, um, the Olympics years ones and the hundred meters. Cause, cause, cause it took me, it took me the entire time, but I finally I, like blurted out the answer right before whoever it was that gave the answer. Um, and I, so I really, that, that felt really satisfying. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah I, I went wrong on that one. I was thinking, oh, is this is this British winners of the 100 metres? And I was thinking, um, 1980, Alan Wells in Moscow. Um, um, just didn't think through, oh, this could end up at Jesse Owens, which is really... Yeah, I, I, I had figured out I had figured out where the, you know, where the Olympics were in those years. And I was just trying to remember, where was it in 1936? And then all of a sudden I was like, mm. oh, that's the most obvious one. <laughs> that's why it's the last one. Um... Look, guys, if you have to go now, um, yeah, yeah, I think we have to show off because I know we're about the time that you said you'd have to yeah. disappear. But, but before we do, I, I really do want to say that 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 your performance, uh, Bhagwan, tonight was just wonderful, and definitely your team. I mean, I was so impressed with the with, with the ones that your team was able to come up with because I certainly didn't. 
Um, neither of us did watching. Um, so it's a, it's a shame that it's a shame that it didn't go you know your way. But as you say, you, those guys are those guys are really great quizzes. So no shame. Oh, thank you. And, and I thought when I when I heard Richard was going to be on this, and I saw with like a minute to go, he had eighteen in general knowledge, and I was like, we were thinking, so I was wow, thinking, this gonna... yeah, it's really uh, good of Richard to come on this, having lost the uh, lost the show. And I was like, oh no, he's getting another one. He's getting another one. He's getting another one. Okay, Rich, Richard's won the episode. Yeah, That's no, good. I mean, it was, it was remarkable. We were like at the edge of our seats, and it was it was really impressive. So very well done there. I can't wait to see your semi final. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see your match this evening. <laughs> yeah, enjoy, enjoy that. No, no, no spoilers. <laughs> anyway, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, for having me. Thanks for having us. Cheers, cheers, guys. Love you. You. Hey, Thanks. Right. Cheers, bye, everyone. Thanks. Um, I think at that point we'll just take a quick break to go through um, the quiz week news, and when we come back, we will um, finish off talking about Only Connect, and then we'll. <laughs> Go a little bit more into detail into Richard's mastermind. So, um, guys, if you want to quickly nip to the loo, get a drink, or whatever, you've got a, a few minutes to do so um, whilst we do quiz week. So, quiz week. Um, if I find my notes, um, if we go to the first slide first. Um, the winner of Quizzer of the Week last week was Tom Mead for his debut um, genre win in the Quizzing Grand Prix. Peter Edis came second and Tom Mead, th uh, Tom Adams third for their performances in the Pop Culture Challenge. Quiz Team of the Week was Cardi B for, from the uh, Connections Online Quiz League. Uh, Team Northeast came second and Animal Lovers from Only Connect came third. So nominations have reopened for next week's vote and we will announce the nominees next week on um, Quizzy Monday. Um, and if you want to nominate somebody, go to tinyurl.com slash ATQ nominations um, and you can put forward a nomination for quiz or team or just for a shout out. And we'll run through all the nominees very shortly. Before we do that, um, we've got the winner of um, what is the question. The answer was Step and Eleanor Ayres uh, wrote, uh, wrote the question that was voted winner. Dick Van Dyke did this in time in the film Mary Poppins. Michael Ball did one out of time. At Eurovision in 1992, and Kylie Minogue did it back in time in 1990. What? So, congratulations to Eleanor. Um, we now have another set of questions to vote for. Um, the answer is black, and we have had 56 questions. Uh, it's been amazing. You can now go to tinyurl.com/slash WITQ black, and you can vote from the long list to find our short list. And on Wednesday, we'll put the short list out and we'll find ourselves. A winner. So tinyurl.com slash WITQ Black. And if you want to play what is the question, we'll release a new answer in need of a question on Sunday on Facebook and Twitter. And I think, oh yes, don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. It helps YouTube recommend us to other people like you. And also, of course, um, just subscribing makes me happy. And who wouldn't want to make me happy, particularly when I'm a little bit ill? So, um, Thank you for that. Uh, that's a very shameless. Valerie is cringing away here. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through um, the uh, latest news in the world of quiz from this week. Um, Merseyside Quiz League had a face-to-face -face buzzer quiz at the weekend, and it was won by the T-Siders. Um, that's Michael McPartland, Adam Barr, Tony Wormsley, and Clive Dunning. Congratulations to them. They get a nomination for Team of the Week. The best individual player was Pat Gibson, so he gets a nomination for being best individual player. Um, a shout out uh, to Team of Two Hars, which was Andy Bolton, Oliver Levy, and Paul Sinha, who made it to the final despite only having three players. In the online quiz league, there were no full houses this week, but a clutch of players got seven twos, and they were Dave Lee, James Wharton, Vincent Bright, and James Horton. Um, they all get nominations. And we're just two weeks in, but there are precious few unbeaten records left. Um, but one of them is the Central Belters, who sits up a Division One with two wins out of two. Team nominations this week go to the Jeff Maltby Fan Club with a 56 to 44 win, and to MK Jeds for scoring 55 points in the Rookie Eight Division. In the Pop Culture Challenge, Tom Adams, Lewis Jones, Tom Speller, Will Swigert and Dave Gregson can count themselves mighty unlucky not to get nominations this week for 13 out of 15 of their own questions. But Jack Lewis got 14 out of 15 and he takes nomination. In the Connections Online Quiz League, Life Within Buildings get a nomination for scoring 41 points in their match and not a single question going dead. 
In the Quiz League of London, there were no full houses either, but Dow Jackson and Thomas Grinier both got 18-7. Reigning champions, Nomads roared back after a uh, first week defeat, but it's Division 1 table toppers, Pericardium, who get a nomination for their beat over perennial high achievers, Broken Hearts. And in the President's Cup, there's a nomination for Sussex, who sit on top of the table after one round of games. In OQL USA, Victoria Gross was at it again this week with another full house. She gets a nomination, and her team, Neutral Milf Hotel, had a sublime win. They get nominated. Also nominated for full houses are Jeff King, Scott Blish, and McKinney Sizemore. On broadcast quizzes, today was the first semi final of Brain of Britain. Phil Small won it um, against tough competition. He gets a nomination for reaching the final. Mastermind, we've seen. Um, uh, Richard Aubrey win tonight. Congratulations to Richard. Um, only Connect the golfers won handsomely. Um, and a nomination goes to Birmingham University for their win on University Challenge. Now, I think that's probably it. So I'm going to run through the nominations. Oh, and we're nominating Richard uh, for his win on Mastermind. Forgot that. Richard goes top of the list. Um, wasn't on my notes earlier. So the nominees for Quizzer of the Week are Richard Aubrey, Scott Blish, Vincent Bright, Pat Gibson, Thomas Grinier. Uh, Victoria Gross, James Horton, Dal Jackson, Jeff King, Dave Lee, Jack Lewis, McKinney Sizemore, Phil Small and James Wharton. And for Team of the Week, it's uh, Birmingham University, Jeff Morby Fan Club, Life Within Buildings, MK Jeds, Neutral Milf Hotel, Pericardium, Sussex from the QLL and the Teesiders. The vote closes on Sunday at 5pm. You can vote at tinyurl.com slash qw11ox. Um, is that it for the presentation? It is. So <coughs> I will now return us back to our normal programming and bring Bagwan back on and Richard is doing something interesting um with his camera I'm just gonna wait for a second let I was oh we'll just have a look at your bookcases there Richard that was uh that was yeah, I, 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 I think I might have to prop up my tripod for the rest of this one. Oh god that's fine hello <laughs> welcome well, back and and congratulations on your nomination um Thank you. Um, can, 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 I, can I just say, uh, w w worthy win, worthy team winners in Cardi B. Uh, as, 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 as string section captain, we played them yesterday in in the quarters. They, uh, yeah, they were forced to be reckoned with. I think the the final four in this year's cockle is is anyone's game. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, I was I was deeply impressed with with with, with Hugh Bennett, mm. um, David Stainer, and Ian Toms yesterday. They, mm. they 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 took us to the cleaners, worthy winners last week, mm. worthy quarter finalists this week. Mm. Fair play to them all. And and cockle for anybody who doesn't know is the connections online quiz league, which is basically only connect but not on TV. Um, and uh, David Stainer from Cardi B uh, is the captain of the Crossworders, who won series one and every champion of champions um, thereafter. Um, Ian Tom's probably the finest quizzer not to have been on TV yet. Um, so you know, and, and you bet it fantastic quizzer. So, yeah, great team. Um, um, uh, Jamie Fryer says, uh, love the Greta Thunberg question. Um, I, I, I really like that one, I have to say. I thought that was a that was a nice one and a nice little follow up from uh, from Victoria, um, on that one. Um, yes, the uh, Pirala Sharon. A kindly but poorly informed teenager and happy young girl looking forward. I really like that one. Um, Great moment. Your walls, um, Bagwan. Obviously, this is the first time you saw um, uh, the golfer's wall. What did you make of it? Um, I actually thought their wall was a little bit more nicer than ours. Um, maybe because we didn't do as well as them on there. But um, I mean, the 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 a couple of the a couple of the sort of um areas jumped out to me quite quickly and more more in comparison to remembering when i when we did our wall when we were filming um but um yeah i mean really so i mean some of them very very tricky like <laughs> on our wall the the sort of the last one that we didn't quite get the bio one mm. it's staring at us in the face and we you could probably see our disappointment that we didn't get it yeah. but um, yeah it was a uh, it was just it was just an evil quite evil yeah but mm. both quite tough but i thought oh, theirs was just slightly slightly easier yeah so gerard um, was saying that he thought it was tough um jamie from last uh, season the barons said both walls were so hard struggled particularly with the first one but felt they were well balanced um 
again, you know, when you're not confronted with it in the studio, it, it's a slightly different experience. But right. what, what I appreciated about um, the golfers was Francis captained them with a rod of iron. Um, and they, yeah. they kept trying to kind of, um, uh, you know, they started to get a little bit kind of wayward and, and, and I don't know what the word is, not um, lacking in discipline, maybe. And he just said, keep looking, keep looking. And it was just, I thought that that was probably key to their success. I thought that was superb. Yeah. Yeah, they worked very well as a team and um, great sort of like, I think Victoria said, unflappable captaincy. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of what sealed the deal. <laughs> them because we we were very good at sort of identifying things but not sticking with them mm. uh, and like sort of dashing about and I think that was probably our little downfall when it came to the wall but um yeah very very great teamwork from the golfers mm. for sure and on the wall Richard you know um that kind of systematic approach particularly when you've identified five or six that could be in a group is absolutely critical to have that that calmness isn't it when you're cycling through things to not get distracted by you know getting through three combinations and then just starting off after something else um yeah i i i i'll own i've, I've caught up on what the round one and twos are for discussion here but but not the walls yet <laughs> but in terms of the question you're asking um yeah i remember we, we had a quarter final where i look like a lunatic when it airs because um we had if, if you look at it we got down to the last two it was one of the only two walls we completed in, in our five five episode run um but we got down to the last two and when, when you have your your three lives and then bust and mm. i was a, if you look at it it's really obvious which two groups are remaining and you can split them immediately into two lots of four but i was obsessed with the idea that they would have to still be red herrings so we started playing, uh, sort of guessing at random words that didn't make sense. And of course, what I had completely forgotten was there had been red herrings and we'd removed them in the first two groups that had already gone out. Mm. So y y you, you do have to keep that, that, um, that disconnect going. It, mm. Disconnect, only connect. Uh, mm. of, of thinking, well, what 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 groups are we are we are we assigning and also each time you remove four what new information does that give you and what old information does that remove from the game mm. um and and just sort of glancing i i, I do i do have the walls playing on my laptop right now <laughs> I, 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 I can see moments where they're sort of forgetting where where, where um red herrings have been removed in earlier groups mm. Oh, we should have just done this on a, as a watch along. We should all be watching you playing the wall, Richard. No pressure, but we, we could uh, we could have enjoyed that. Um, as you've caught up on the other questions, were there any of those that you that, that leapt out to you? Um, I liked the hundred meter one that you said earlier. Uh, the uh, the combat officer wasn't anywhere near bag one. It was an that was an amazing spot. So well done, well done. <laughs> um, can I ask a question? And, and and this comes yeah. with all sorts of caveats that there is no judgment here, no no no, no criticism whatsoever. I just I'm, I would just like the debate. It's something I've asked online a couple of a couple of times in the yeah. past over the last few years. Given the specific nature of the only connect oeuvre, the repeated question. Okay. The AA to DD yeah. was. Well, I, I I got I got that in our semi final. We had a music question, um, and we didn't recognise uh, Arthur uh, Arthur Atkinson or um, uh, Bridget Bardo. But when we heard Toby Checker, we guessed is this AABBCC? And I said, as I think word for word was said by your opposition, anything by Desmond Decker. <laughs> yeah. Now, now again, I mean, I, this is an open conversation given given we're on a podcast. Um, mm. I don't know whether I care one way or the other, but I've been guilty of dismissing stuff by thinking, "Oh, well, that's been done before, so it must be something different." It isn't. It mm. it doesn't feel quite the same as just a raw general knowledge question, which will be repeated from time to time. Like if mm. if, if if a question came up on University Challenge twice, you, you wouldn't bat an eyelid, but mm. Um, connection or sequence conceits? What do we think? I don't know. Background, what do you think? It's interesting you say that <laughs> because you have to sort of, I think, 
you have to sort of take into account like what questions you've had sort of the question writers have written in previous series and sort of add on to them and embellish them I suppose um it's it's sort of like it's sort of like when you do an exam and and you've got a similar question there and and sort of the techniques there um I mean if it's sort of a like for like question it's a bit like oh okay um maybe we should have spotted that but uh yeah I definitely see what you mean there yeah um repeat questions I think you know 17 series in it's hard to sort of maybe think of something original oh, no, now but absolutely as, as I say, and that's that's part of my no judgment. It's yeah, meant to be. Of course, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. And you still have to spot that connection, even if it is a a repeat. You still got to spot it. You know, you could perhaps do you know e e f f g g h h, if that works. Um, I do think it's a it's a it's a hard job coming up with the questions, and there are, you know, there are certain types of question that one way or another, you know, um will come up time and time again i don't know um yeah i'm not i'm not sure i'm not sure it's avoidable um but i would be more worried if it was exactly the same clues um yeah. going through i think that that would bother me a little bit more um than having the question <laughs> there um I, I i thought well, I, well I, I did i did think it was interesting that that um the exact art as I say, I said on the show five years ago, anything by Desmond Decker, as did the, 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 whoever answered tonight. Yeah. This time round, they were going for Duran Duran so that we could have Rio, whereas mm. back then they'd clearly been thinking Desmond Decker so that we could sing You Can Get It If You Really Want, um, yeah. which, we were, which we were all then made to sing as a... Uh, all, all, you, get, you get to go to the final if you want to. Um, yeah, um, so the, the, the 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 presumed answer was was at least different. Yeah, we do have comments about your singing. Um, ironically, he's a fantastic singer. Um, apparently, there's video of it. Bagwan, how did you feel about singing? I don't know. It was a bit. I mean, <laughs> I think actually, there's a close up of me just laughing because it's it's just weird that you just get put on the spot and I, I can see what you mean Richard I mean they obviously wanted us to sing Rio by Duran Duran in a <laughs> sort of like a one two three at home and it's like I'm trying to think about what's going to happen next and <laughs> yeah when I mean, you just put on the spot I mean I can't I, I'm, I'm not a very good singer so yeah it's just uh, I wasn't going to go <clears throat> and then get into it so <laughs> me, me, me. Yeah. um yeah I mean it's I, I think I kind of avoided it, although I did join in with Ace of Spades when I was on. But that wasn't one of these Victoria saying, let's all have a thing that was more spontaneous. Yeah. Um, so Claire, Claire is very, very specific. Singing worked really well if there was a consensus and a starting note. Maybe somebody with a, a tuning fork. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, missing vowels. Um, you know, you, you, were, you were still in the game going into missing vowels. It was 17-13. Were you yeah. feeling like you could come back? I mean, you were against some ferocious players. You know, Evan is is the uh, current British quiz Great. champion. Yeah. yeah he, is, he is awesome. We, um, from our from our first round match, we, um, against the Apollos, we, we were we were down by quite a considerable margin going into the missing mm. vowels round and, and we clawed it back uh, by quite a fair mm. bit. Um, so, you know, we did sort of go into the missing vowels round thinking, OK, yeah, maybe maybe we could just claw this back slightly. But it, yeah, it, it all sort of falls on whether you are, you know, whether you know the, the, the category as well and um, whether you're sort of brave enough, I suppose, because you don't really want to lose a point. Um, but um, I think, you know, at the, at the end of the day, they, they were very like, you know, very quick on the buzzer. Um, so there were some, there were some that we got, some that like they, they got. It was quite evenly matched, but um, mm. yeah, I mean, we, we we thought we felt okay about it, but we thought no matter what happens, we we've been up against a very good team and had a really good match. Yeah, and you get to play again, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, not knocked out, so that's all. That's all good. Um, favorite question of the night? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think our first, I mean, our first question of the first round, the the number one, crazy, crazy in love, Annie, Annie, get your gun. I think that was quite a clever one. Um, like the way that that was written. We did, we did like that one for sure. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Richard, have you got any favourites from what you've seen? 
Uh, 100% with bad one. Um, a, a, a question to play out was was mm-hmm. the very, very first one. Uh, yeah. Best spot, probably the Years of Monarchs. Yeah. But, but, but actually, um, a, a question just to see the conceit and to think that that's quite nicely done, as you yeah. both said, yeah. was, was that, that very first one. Cool. Um, mastermind, then, Richard. Last but not least, Maybe. I thought the set of first round performances was superb across the board. I thought it was a really high caliber um, episode of Mastermind on on the uh, on the specialist subjects. What do we have? We had 11, 10, 10, and you, then you're 13, which was just yeah, absolutely superb. Um, going into that, you know, when you've done it before, did you feel kind of extra pressure, you know, knowing the ropes and, and, and kind of being, being a quizzer as it were, um, did you feel a little um, extra pressure? Um, sh- sh- should I have done? I, I, if anything, <laughs> I, if anything, I felt the reverse. I felt, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've done this once before. I, I, I know the chair. I, and then this is, this is not cocking. This, this is a, um, I, I, I enjoy this now. And mm. if, and if, it's not to be today. If I come up against someone better, if I have a bad day, mm. you know, I, I I I like being in the chair. I like being under the lights, mm. uh, and I sort of knew what to expect. And and that and that that did not mean I feel more confident. If, far from it, mm. but it meant I I was less worried if it hadn't worked out. Mm. I, I I thoroughly enjoy the experience. I've, I've always thought that of the chair. For, mm. for um, I, I I don't know. I have other people who, who, who are tuning on this feed or who want to go on it. But the, the whole kind of the, the, the mastermind mythos, uh, mm. I think actually when push comes to shove, you sit in a you sit in a chair and you answer quiz questions, and if you're a quizzer, that's what you love most. <laughs> so it's fun. And uh, and your special subject of yes minister and yes prime minister, I mean that's a lot of people um, used to have the attitude that popular culture subjects were were dumbing down or were the easy option. That's not an easy option. You know, no, the number of um, episodes. It's th- 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 37 plus a special, th- 38 episodes. Uh, and, you know, and, 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 and as a, as a, um, as a shout out, I, d- I done posh highbrow um, biographies last time around to appease you lot. And this time around, <laughs> I thought, no, I'll, I'll I'll do what gets me through round one, <laughs> and, and and what I like. I mean, what what, what genuinely what happened? And, and anyone who, who anyone's watching this on my Facebook, I I think I put this whole story out. That basically, on the first day of lock of work from home lockdown, when I was sent home from school, and we weren't really sure what was going on for the next two weeks, let alone let alone two years, uh, I applied for Mastermind on that first day. And I shoved down a list of about seven specialist subjects. And then I went on eBay and I bought about 50 books thinking, well, well you know, these are subjects I'm interested in. So even if they're not used, at least I'll be able to read up on them and, 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 and enjoy. Uh, and then heard nothing back. And I, 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 still, I still now don't know whether I had applied for last series or just this series or, or some rest. <laughs> I, I don't know. Eleven months later, this February, got a phone call saying, mm. "Congratulations, and are you still fine with your specialist subjects?" To which I had to say, "Well, that depends. What, what were they?" <laughs> um, and it turns out that one of the ones they, they they'd approved was yes, minister. Mm. Um, in it, in and in the interim eleven months, I think I'd watched the entire series at least three times through. So. Mm. Uh, it, it, mm. it 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 seemed a thing that you can do if you've got a lot of time on your hands, as tragically so many of us have had in mm. the last eighteen months. But nonetheless, as as Gerald says, and as a rest, bloody hard the low the option, they were densely scripted episodes, and and they were. You know, you got so many quotable moments. You've got the plots. You've got characters. You've got actors. Um. Did you find, and I've, we've heard it from other people at times, that studying something you love in that much detail can start to kind of, the, the love can wear off a little bit, or did it just kind of reinforce it for you? Oh, okay, okay, I mean, um, 
this is dif- this is, I, I knew you were gonna ask that question th- 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 this is difficult mm-hmm. I, I i honestly don't know i i now think on the second one that people have to find their own path the first time when i was purely taking advice and people have done it before mm-hmm. i i had um d- don't don't deep dive things you already like mm-hmm. do something you have to do from scratch uh, because one, you'll end up hating the thing you love, and 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 two, you might end up um, you you, ass- you assume the things they're going to ask, and then you ignore the the small stuff because you think, well, well I know this subject well enough to know that that's that's not interesting. Yeah. So with with Tr- Alan Turing and Isaac Newton were my two subjects in the first time I went on the show. It was very much a start from scratch, and. Mm-hmm. This time round, I've I've done um, you know, a show I like watching, and I thought, well, I'll just watch a lot of it and answer a lot mm. of it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, I've won, so am I allowed to mm. at least say what my subject is the next yeah, round? Is yeah, that... yeah, no, no, you're through, of course, yeah. Um, so the the the, 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 the world snooker championships, forty five okay. years at the Crucible, uh, was very much a. I think I know enough about this to now be able to top up my knowledge. Mm. And I do, and I honestly couldn't tell you whether five years ago or this year is the best approach. And I genuinely don't want anyone who's thinking of applying mm. to think that one, one pathway is better than the other. Mm. I have heard for, for, for every person who said, don't do something you love so much <coughs> that you're going to hate it after you deep dive. I've also heard... Um, don't do something you know so little about that you don't know what the frame what the framing is and what the framework mm. is. Uh, and I certainly felt with um, well, I got thir- thirteen questions right tonight. Mm. Four of them were one hundred percent not in my flashcards, not in my lists at all. Mm. When I was asked, them, oh yeah, I wish I'd thought about that, but also <laughs> I like the show, I know the answer. So if you know something well enough, I think that can pay dividends. Um, I don't know that I'd necessarily say that is that is the default. I think it can work. Mm. It can work both ways. Interesting. Bag one, and we know obviously dentistry will be your number one choice. But if you were to go on Mastermind, is there anything you would fancy having a go at? Oh, I've never given that a thought. I mean, I don't think I'd be very good enough for Mastermind because my general knowledge isn't always the best. But um, uh, oh put me on the spot here <laughs> I, would the know, I would know um laura on my on the team's been on mastermind she was on the previous series um so she she did i think she got to the semi-finals for that mm-hmm. so we have a we have a seasoned masterminder so i think uh, yeah they probably wouldn't let me on because we've all, we've got one already <laughs> <laughs> um tom adams oh you're getting the puns you can't do dentistry the chair leans back um, <laughs> um, anyway, um, um, so um, yeah, so very strong specialist subject. General knowledge, you just nipped over the line, and that was that was tense stuff. I liked what you said about inspiring students. Um, what do you think the reaction will be when you go back into school tomorrow, Richard? Um, uh, my my um. My my head teacher has, has has been has been stitching me up all day, so I think I think there were a fair, a fair few students who were going to watch it. Um, I, I I like to I like to think I like to think that the um the thing about the general knowledge is that it shows what a, a rounded education can do for 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 a breadth of knowledge. And that the inspirational thing is actually that that there's some there's some merit and there's a lot of kudos in knowing stuff that is um, at the very least if 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 you're a fifteen sixteen year old student at old at the oldest it, it is 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 at the the periphery of your academic GCC mm. subject but but at best is is a wider curriculum that you don't mm. No one told you you needed to learn this. It's it's just something that you that you do because you enjoy finding out new things. Mm. And, I, and I and I'm really hoping that 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 that's that there are people who 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 see any of us on quizzes quizzes and think actually I've gone out 
these are people who've gone out of their way to learn more stuff and not because they've been told to it was a homework task by their teacher mm. because it's going to come up on an exam. Mm. Um, and yeah, I've yet to have any, any, any students come up to me saying, actually, can you teach me how to do this? But mm. uh, I, I'd, the, the, the hope that people are inspired to maybe sit in the black chair in 10 years time was, was, was not a false hope. I, I, mm. Yeah. Well, we will we will see in in, uh, in ten years' time or more to see who has been inspired. But um, you know, certainly a very good role model. To say have a go. You know, what's the worst that can happen? And certainly we saw what the best was. Um, there was one comment, and um, very quickly because we need to wrap up soon. Um, that people were making online. They were they were saying, oh, that question was really really easy. But it was always the first question, the spaghetti bolognese question. Um, uh, was one X, I think. Oh, sorry, the, the multiplication one for you. Yeah. I mean, that that is standard kind of ease you into the round territory. Presumably, that's not something you, you have a problem with. Not in the least. Uh, S -S -S Sam was the first person to joke in in, in the hotel afterwards about, like, e e e even in the sphere, of, you know the first question is a settler. He thought, bloody hell! Haven't you just given me the answer? Um, and and yeah, yes, I had the same multiplication. In fact, the, in fact, the only the only criticism I got was, mm -hmm. give, give, given you on the clock, why did you say multiplication rather than times, times. or multiply? <laughs> um, uh, the, the the one the one I want to comment on, and I and I and I know I'm speaking to the converted, and almost certainly no one on this feed is is, is going to be someone I need to speak to. But the people um, on Twitter attacking Tara for the Germany answer can get ah. in the sea. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one has any idea of what the chair does to you. But also, of those subjects that we, we just know straight off, this is not in my wheelhouse. I want to move on. Yeah. I, I, I distinctly remember um, five years ago when I was on the show before, uh, there was a studio audience. And I got a question about... Um, well, it, it was uh, who, who wrote Stranger in a Strange Land, mm. and the question it, that was the last. If, if, I'm, if I if I remember rightly, that question that 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 actual novel was right at the end of the question. So there'd been mm. loads of peripherals done about the author, and I and I, and I decided I didn't know the answer, and then didn't know it anyway. Mm. Um, so I, I said uh, I quickly said the name of the novel Frankenstein. Move on, and it it got a giggle from behind me with a studio audience. And I remember vaguely feeling that, the, that, that that giggle was then swallowed up by an audience who laughed at a stupid answer and then quickly realised, no, that's strategy. Hmm. Now, we're not getting that now because there's no audience at the, at the moment hmm. in, in the show. But n no one has the right to judge that someone uh, uh, just throws away an answer that is a plausible word that fits, hmm. that fits the question in order to quickly move on. Mm. And that seems to have been the heaviest hit on on um on Twitter mm. tonight, and it, it bloody outrageous. And and the mm. saddest thing is actually that, that, that Tara, uh, the the the, the, contest, the contender yeah. in question, has actually felt like she needs to go back on and justify herself, which she totally yeah. doesn't. And there are people in in life who are talkers, and there are people in life who are doers, and the quizzes who put themselves up for that challenge, not knowing quite what they're going to face, what they're going to be asked. They're life doers. I'd always back them over the talk talkers every single day. Um, absolutely. absolutely no criticism of anybody who puts themselves up for scrutiny, uh, wow. for potential embarrassment. And a number of us have been there and said stupid things on, on quiz shows um, or seemingly stupid things. Sometimes it's... Seemingly is, is, is the yeah. operative word. But, this um, was an answer to move, to move the question on. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. tactics. Um, yeah. But it is frustrating when uh, keyboard warriors just pronounce and they don't know what they're talking about. But then keyboard warriors talk about football, they talk about cricket, they talk about all sorts of things that they don't know anything about. Quiz is the same. We just, um, yeah, we need to we need to keep hammering the positive messages about people like Tara, like yourselves, Bagwan, Richard, the guys we had on earlier that there would be no mastermind or only connect or university challenge 
if there weren't people prepared to put themselves up um, for that sort of ordeal. And we should be supporting people, not not criticizing them for for saying you know something um, that they, they don't understand why they said it. And and now Cadaver Gate, I now feel a little bit guilty about that. But it was your friend that suggested no, it, no, Richard. No, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 that's absolutely fine. I mean, that was. Um, um, so Gerard says he's spoken to Tara online. She might join us in future weeks. She would be more than welcome to join us. Good. Um, even, on, even on the show. Absolutely. Um, she would be welcome to come on, Gerard, if, if you want to suggest that. Um, guys, very quickly then wrap up. Uh, what, were your what was your high point of the evening's quizzing? Bag one. <coughs> um... Just, just managing to to sort of hold up against a really good team. I think we worked very well as a team, and we didn't get the result we wanted. But I think we held our own, and um, we can come away with our, our heads held high, and and hope that we can attack it better in the next next stage. And we look, we look forward to that because you've been a very entertaining team for the two times we've seen you, Richard. You. Um, it may be obvious, but what was your highlight of uh, of this evening? Quizzy Mondays. Hey, that's the right answer, Richard, and and, uh, <laughs> and we thank you for coming on. We know you've had to juggle a few things, um, but it's been much appreciated. Um, my highlight, as ever, is, is, is speaking to great quizzes um, and, and just enjoying the company. Question-wise, probably that very first question in round one of OC, um, Crazy in Love, that one. Um, but equally, you know, I've known Richard for quite a, a while now, Um Seeing you get over the line right on the edge, that was brilliant because you love to see your friends do well. Um, so that was really, really enjoyable as well. So, um, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm, t I'm, t I'm totally bound to say that that, that that was that was the you've basically got unlimited time if the buzzer's already gone. Mm. That was just go, go, <laughs> work around the border of Poland until you say a word that oh, hang on a minute, Lithuania makes sense. <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> Well, you still had to put it away, and, and you did, so congratulations. Um, thank you so much, um, Bagwan, Richard, and thank earlier, uh, Michael and John, for joining us. Thanks for everybody who's watched. Don't forget to um, <laughs> subscribe and, and click thumbs up so that people can find all things Quiz and Quizzy Monday. Uh, and tell people, you know, maybe tell people and recommend um, the channel and, uh, and Quizzy Monday, and hopefully we'll get uh, um, more people next week. Um, I don't know who we've got on next week. I know we've got Alex McMillan, one of the question setters, coming in in the next few weeks. That's something to look forward to, but I'm not actually sure who um, who we got on next week, so that'll be a nice surprise to look out for. Um, till then, don't forget about um, um, what is a question, which will come out on Sunday. Don't forget about lunchtime quiz time, um, which is on um, Twitter every day, um, 12 till 2. Um, and I think... That is it for tonight. Oh, don't forget to vote for the winner of Quiz of the Week and Quiz Team of the Week. Um, so, um, yes, Catherine, QI's Alex. Um, so, yes, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you next week. Good night.